Hello, Whovians, and welcome back to the third channel. Hooray! We're back doing more interviews. Yes, it's always good to do more interviews. Yes, it is. Um, a slightly bit of admin before we begin. A brand new YouTube channel, number 22, has been developed. I mentioned it on Tom Mason, the main channel, when I mentioned it. It's called um, Mur Only Murders on TV. So it's the podcast that I do on this channel, well, I did on this channel. They'll still be on this channel in the playlist department, but the video version will be on its own channel, where we talk about TV programmes from crime dramas to to, to detective programmes to police procedurals and those true life ones where it's like it's a it's a crime that's based off an actual crime. It's one of those like um I don't know quiz, but it wasn't a crime that was a who wants to be a millionaire thing, but it's that type of concept where it's a real event but they've dramatized bits of it, do you know what I mean? Hopefully you understand that because I made them more complicated than it actually needed to be. But today we shall crack on. We're here with an excellent guest. He is best known at creating some of the most memorable theme tunes on British TV and probably Australia, depending on which countries air the programme as well. I think Australia broadcasts Grand Design, but we'll, but, but it depends. Who knows? I, well, I should know, but who knows? But it's the one and only David Long! A very warm hello to you, Tom, and everybody listening and watching. Hope everybody's okay. Hope you're going to enjoy it. So we'll start at the beginning. How did you get into the world of composing? Um, well, I got in, um, it's similar to, to what you're doing in a, in a way. I got in through radio, through the BBC, and I was a bit of a, a, a sort of geek about the BBC when I was a teenager. I, I just really wanted to work for the BBC and I, I got an opportunity to go in, help out at the weekend on a radio show that was uh, for young people when I was when I was about 18, 17. And I absolutely loved it. And I got really into radio production, editing, making jingles. I found that I, I had this thing of, of creating things with sound. I absolutely loved doing that. I spent hours in the studio editing and mixing sounds together. And uh, but, but at the same time, I was also interested in music and synthesizers, electronic music and all that side of things. And um, so eventually I'd sort of got a job um, recording sound uh, at the BBC um, as part of a film crew. We used to go out and, and shoot local news stories and um, and in my spare time, I, I, because I was earning a bit more money, I, I went out and bought this brand new synthesizer that had just come out and I got it home, I opened the box and I pulled it out and started playing it and literally I was hooked from that day on. And um, I haven't really stopped writing tunes since, you know, from over 40 years now, I guess. And um, so I started composing, writing tunes. We got a band together. We did some gigs. And so I was doing a bit of both. I was working in TV as a sound man and I was doing music in my spare time. And then the two things converged one day, literally this chance to chat with a, with a chap at the BBC who needed some music for a a TV show he was working on. And he said, oh, you do music, don't you? Do you fancy having a go at coming up with a, an idea for a theme tune? And uh, it was really a casual chat, like people people would say, you know. And I thought, yes, I'm going to do that. And uh, so I said, yeah, absolutely. So I went off and came up with this idea, played it to them. They all said, yeah, we like that. We'll use that. And that was my very first theme tune. I think it was about 24 when I did that. And I thought, this is the path for me, writing TV themes. and. Um, because I love a TV theme, always loved a TV theme anyway. And um, so, uh, and it started from there really. And because I was at the BBC anyway, um, in the, I was in the building literally, and I, people would be needing music. And they go, oh, just ask Dave Lowe to do it. He, he does music. So the word gets about and they say, can you do me one as well? So, you know, things built up and built up and built up over the years until finally here we are, you know. And as a child, was there a particular programme or, or selection of programmes that inspired you to think, oh, I really like this music, I want to know how it was made and I want to have a go at trying to see if I can learn how to play that tune? Um, not really. It was, it was more uh, a general thing about the, um, 
the warmth of, of TV themes, and because it, when I was a kid, all there was to watch on telly was the BBC and ITV, and, and you'd all sit around the telly at night and watch, watch your, your favourite show, you know. And the theme tune was always a, a big part of it. I, mean, I never really thought about sort of how do they do it and, and what was it, but it was more like it was just a familiar thing that, that grabbed you, you know, and it, and it made you think, ah, oh, it's this time of night, we're watching the telly, this programme is on. And um, so, um, and there were some really amazing composers in those days that um, a guy called Ronnie Hazelhurst um, springs to mind. And um, in a way, I think I base my sort of, he's my, my hero, you know, my, my legend in a way, because he, he, he basically spent all of his time writing theme tunes for the BBC. And he, in fact, he had a little office at the BBC, at their old television centre headquarters. And... Um, people would just be knocking on his door saying hey can, can you do one for us ronnie you know and um, he ended up doing loads of really iconic theme tunes that people still know and love now you know and um and in a way I've, i feel like he was a bit of a, a real inspiration for me in a way and um i'm sort of following in his footsteps i think yeah and one of the things you've worked on has remained in everyone's consciousness due to not just due to the fact fact that the, the music was memorable and catchy which is a key a key detail but it's also due to the time slot that it aired and it reminded people of a certain moment in their life what was it like working on the antiques roadshow theme tune um well that was amazing i mean i have to point out i didn't actually write the antiques roadshow theme tune i was asked to arrange it so it had already been written and composed by somebody else um a while ago i think it was two guys that did it um years ago and, uh, it's, and the Antiques Roadshow has been on for years, of course, on the BBC, and it's become this really iconic piece of music. And um, so when they asked me to do it, I was thrilled to get the chance to, to work on it. And um, I basically um, listened to the original and um, just, just took it apart, really, um, and worked out what all the different layers and the levels were of it. And what they needed to do with it was, was make it longer um, to fit under the pre-title introduction that they were that they got which was about a minute long which was mainly um talked over basically you know so you had the music couldn't get in the way it had to sort of burble away underneath so it was a way of actually taking the main theme still keeping it recognizable but making it a little a bit more low-key and under the voiceover so it was really really um enjoyable to work with and um it's one of those tunes that you never really never really get bored with you know you can listen to it over and over and over again and um so i um and it's all based on real instruments as well so it's there's a trumpet is the main thing you've got violins you've got flute you've got clarinet um so i i work with lots of you know those, those musicians of clarinet flute violin trumpet and so it's always good fun to work with live musicians as well to get that that feeling over in the music so it was it was really good fun to do and um really really nice to have a show like that which is so iconic you know and do you reckon that uh, having a theme tune being catchy as something memorable helps to keep the memory of that program and that and that genre of that type of thing alive a lot longer well, i think it definitely does i think it's all wrapped up together i think the theme tune becomes the identity for the show, you know, and um, the longer it's on and the more people warm to it and like it, especially shows like the Antiques Roadshow where the, the music is joyful, you know, and it's 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 good and it's it, it's happy and it's like, yes, here we are and it's bright and it's cheerful and it's saying, hey, we, you know, and it's like, ah, oh, it's a Sunday night, we can we can relax, you know, we've got this show and, and, it, and it puts you in the mood and gives you the anticipation for for that to come you know and so the theme tune is a really important part of that is, is like signifying that the program's on and it's a familiar warm feeling that you get and and then you settle down and watch the show so it's yeah it's a very very important part of the program and when you're rearranging a theme like the anti Royal show do you do you have to like watch an episode before you you go to work on it so that you've got an idea of what the current situation of the program is like Absolutely, yeah. So um, especially for this, because um, what they actually do is send me um, the, the rough cut of the opening of the show without any music in. So I can I can layer my music underneath and try it out. 
and see if it if it's working and um so it's a it's you quite often work like that with with the the visuals and with with the, with the pictures that you're going to see and um put the music underneath and make sure that it's it's still recognizably there and it's it's doing its thing but it's not getting too in the way and it's not interfering with what's going on on the screen and so um yeah that's, that's a very important part of it and one of the other things uh, other themes shall we say you've worked on that is in the realms of one of the, in in the selection of most memorable things that the bbc has ever created because it's still on to this very second well it was on probably on an hour ago um but what was it like working on the news round theme tune um um the news round theme tune uh yeah i mean that that was really good fun i, I did that i think i'm not sure if i've done the, the latest one of that but I, de I definitely did um some of the previous ones of that and again it was uh it was it was really good fun to to work on something that that's so recognisable and such a, a show that everybody knows, you know. And um, and part of that was the was the opening thing. I did a little link, did a link, ding, did a link, ding, ding. That that sort of effect. And so it's it's finding a new way to do that, you know, that sounds current and it sounds like now, but it's still got the the recognisable news round sound in it. So that was you know an interesting challenge in a way to come up with something that worked like that and make it bright and bold and um attention grabbing again is the idea and um so that was a, that was a great project to work on and when what when making this theme because it's trying to attract the modern generation of kids do you, did you have to try and listen to other pieces of music that are around now to try and work out what what why the kids enjoy this work out how to make this theme tune work well with the with the generation of children that are currently watching the show i think it's different it's more about um finding a, the right tone you know so it can't be too old and stuffy sounding it's or it can't it's got to be serious sounding but it can't be too serious it's got to be it's got to be sort of bright it's got to be exciting i think and it's got to be colorful in a way if you can make music colorful then that's what you're trying to achieve. It's, it's a colourful burst of sound, if you like. And um, working with uh, younger people and uh, children, that is, that's always what we're aiming for, is bright, colourful, um, instantly grabs your attention. Um, and, you know, it's serious, but it's not too serious, basically. So it's not really about listening to a style of music that's out there the, in, and trying to do that is just trying to find um, more of a tone, you know, more of that feeling and, and putting that across. And one of the other um, pieces you've worked on um, is, well, I, I don't know if it's the only one available on DVD, t TV uh, event wise in, in, in that genre. I might be wrong with that. But what was it like working on, on the London 2012 Olympics? Well, again, that was a, that was a huge um, honour for me, you know, because um, the original composer for that uh, what, what the piece of music was called Chariots of Fire. The original composer's name is Vangelis, and um, he was around when I was a teenager, and he was my again my hero. He was a legend. I absolutely lo loved his music, and um, when I first started writing music, um, in fact, he, you know, I, I, I basically sort of wanted to make it sound like Vangelis. You know, I, I, I had the same sort of keyboard synthesizer sounds and I was writing tracks really with him as a massive inspiration in, in a way to, to some of the first things that I did. And um, so, and Chariots of Fire is such an amazingly iconic uh, piece of music and it's such a good piece of music. It's so simple. And um, because it's effectively just two sections that are repeated over and over, but you never get bored with it. It's it's always um, it stirs your soul. It stirs your heart when you hear it. And so um, it was a real honor, you know, to be asked to come up with a version of Chariots of Fire that they were going to use at the 2012 Olympics. And um, it wasn't really um, something that happened. It was it happened quite quickly in fact it was it was about six weeks before the actual ceremony was about to start 
and they decided that they were using chariots of fire as as the theme for the for the olympics mm. london olympics 2012 and i think what they they came up with this idea quite late on why don't we have different versions of it for the different type of events groups that there are so like track and field swimming tennis all that and we could have like different versions and the idea was to have a, a long 10 minute version of chariots of fire that could be played when the athletes were win getting their medals you know so when they're up the medal ceremonies are in, in the stadium they're presenting all the medals and the music plays as they go to the podium to, to receive their medals you know and so they wanted me to do a 10 minute world music sounding version of chariots of fire so using sounds and uh, atmospheres from around the world and instrumentation uh, from all over you know and combining that with with the theme and um, so it was it was really good fun to do and I got lots of really interesting musicians involved in it as well and um, the greatest bit for me was was watching Andy Murray um, play his tennis uh, he won the gold medal in 2012 for, for the tennis at Wimbledon and um, we were really watch, just watching the tennis. We were like so excited that he won. And then he eventually walked up to get his gold medal. And I'd completely forgotten in a way. I was so engrossed in watching him win. And suddenly there's my music in the background. You know, you can hear it as he's going up on the stage and they say, Andy Murray. And, and they turn the music up and it's my music there all over the stadium. Andy Murray can hear it as he's getting his gold medal. So that was, you know, an amazingly special moment for um, you know nationally and i thought wow you know and, and there's my music um there supporting it you know and so things like that are just incredible once in a lifetime things and i'm so i'm really lucky to have had you know the opportunity for those things to to have happened and do you reckon that having music in an event like the olympics really helps you set a tone a set of precedent that this isn't just your average sunday night kickabout this is a proper uh, at like a proper proper thing that you're watching and you want to feel the emotion that they're going through at that moment oh absolutely yeah i mean the music music is such an emotional thing you know that that's what music is it's music is basically our emotions as sound you know it's it's what emotions sound like so um and of course the the olympics is such you know a massively emotional event sports sports events are always very emotional especially um, that because it was in the UK, it was the London Olympics and Andy Murray winning. So the whole thing was like, yes, you know. And um, so Chariots of Fire was the perfect piece of music to sort of, to have playing there in the background to really stir those emotions up and, and just sort of and super, super speed, you know, make, make them bigger inside everybody and uh, supercharge us with, with these fantastic emotional feelings. And um, it was a brilliant piece of music to do that. And um, so it really does do an important part of, of um, the work when you're there, you know, to heighten your emotion. And having the right piece of music has to, has to be that as well. You know, it couldn't be any piece of music, you know. It's, and the Chariots of Fire just fitted the bill perfectly for that. And for anyone that's got to this point and um, of this interview and uh, and uh, as are an amateur, uh, that's going to be the word I'm going to use. It's probably not the correct word. But what advice could you give someone that's watching this that might want to get into the field of of composing and and audio and in the world of music for TV? Um, I think generally, um, it's it's obviously it takes a very long time to to get to a position where you you know where where I am now you know it's taken me like 40 years I guess in a way you could say to get to where I am now so it's not an easy process to get into and it's not quick but the main thing you 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 want you need to do is enjoy what you're doing just enjoy creating music and have the if you've got that passion for just making music um then you're you know you're off to a good start there yeah? because whatever you do you're just going to enjoy it anyway and so you're just making music primarily because you love doing it and you enjoy doing it. And if you enjoy writing music to, to video pictures and, and that excites you, then, you, you know, just do more of that and just find little videos, make music to fit the videos and just make up your little portfolio of your own work, you know, and just build it up and up and up. But it's just about passion. It's about 
keeping going and just enjoying it and and staying you know just focused on that as your is your thing and um if you can follow your passion like that and um your your you keep your enthusiasm for it that rubs off on people people love enthusiastic people they they love people that love what they do and um so if you bump into somebody that needs music and you're yeah i'm so i love doing music i'm really excited about it then you know that people like that they they, they you know they don't want something oh yeah all right then oh, you want some music yeah oh, you know they want somebody that's passionate and excited so um that's the main thing is just enjoy it and just be yourself and do what you like to do and one of the themes you've worked on is the what is i would say a program that does need to return because it's a unique format that can that can only exist well it can probably exist in in sweden or norway but it definitely works well in britain what was it like working on jump oh blimey you this is an interesting one here you you're you're taking me into a different direction here you um oh yeah it was good um it was it was quite again an interesting one um i think we went through quite a different a few different uh, versions before we came up with the actual finished version for that and um so that one in a way sometimes you can do a, a piece of music that you get it right straight away and somebody says can you what what do you think we should do for this and you go do it and then you and then you you make it and you finish it and they go yes that's the one and and other times it's more of a process where you it evolves and and you start on an idea and it grows and grows and, and with the jump it was a little bit like that and um the best bit about the jump though was really the little pause in the middle we really really that that was a sort of key fun bit of that piece of music because it goes dun, 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 as they do the jump and we wanted to create the sound of a of a jump in the music if you like so um it's like dun, 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 and it pauses and then it boom, and it finishes like that so finding little keys on, and, and ideas within the music's always was a really good fun thing to do so it becomes more than just like a piece of music in a way it's like telling a story you know and um which is what we did with the jump there and when when these programs air uh or, or your music gets distributed out there do you sit down or and listen to your work back to to see if you can work out where you if there's any pitfalls or, or or just to enjoy it personally or do you make sure you as furthest away from it as possible until it's no longer there so you don't have to listen to your things ever again um not really no you i mean you know obviously you will hear you hear things uh go out you know and um the, the best moments in fact are when you're watching something especially with like background music and a piece of music will start and, and you think, oh, that's in, not like that. And you've forgotten that it, you've actually done it, you know. So your first thought is you don't hear it as your piece of music. You just hear it as a piece of music. And when you hear it and you go, oh, I quite like that. And then it keeps going. You think, oh, wait a minute, that's one of mine. I did that. And so that, that's always a really good feeling. And um, when I first when I first started doing it, of course, you are hypercritical and you listen to things and you go, oh, it doesn't sound right. Oh, no, I wish I'd done that or I wish I'd done that or... You know, are they going to take it off because it doesn't sound right? And of course, to everybody else, it sounds exactly what it should be. That's the piece of music. And as you go on, you become more um, sort of um, used to hearing it in its finished state. And, um, you know, you think, oh, yeah, that's working. That's doing its thing. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely feeling, actually. It's a re you, you get a real little buzz in your chest when you see it. And a satisfying feeling where you go, yep that's doing its thing you know that's that's doing what it should be doing and it's there and and um so it's it's yeah it's a nice feeling and one of the things you, you you've worked on is I, I well well everything you've worked on is is incredible because it all becomes like memorable and uh and, and the shows themselves uh always become like some some sort of like weird amazingness because some of them are still going on and some of them uh disappear but then people still remember them just because the sheer weirdness of the concept but what was it like writing music for missing missing well that was a very interesting one because um uh funnily enough I, I met my my present wife was the producer of missing 
So it's quite a special thing for me because that's how we met. So she was the producer and they needed some music um, for the program and they recommended me to do it. And um, and we were, she was a bit hesitant at first because she didn't, she wanted somebody that hadn't, she didn't want somebody to write theme tunes. She wanted somebody to write sort of more film score things. And she thought I might be a too, too theme tuney. And um, and I was like, oh, it's quite a big job, and I'm going to have time and stuff. But we met, and we got we got on straight away. And I thought, nah, actually, this is going to be really good fun. So writing the music for Missing was special for me in that way because it's I met my my present wife through it, you know, and we worked together on it. And um, she was um, she'd not worked with a composer before, so it was quite good fun. You know, um, it's always great when people. A client can come to the studio and um, you can work with them while they're in the studio. And so um, I was doing things to, to impress, you know, I was, I was playing along live to some of the, the things to make it look good, you know. And in the process, I was coming up with, oh, wow, that's sounding all right, actually. So I was probably pushing the boat out a bit because I really liked her, that, that I was doing stuff that I wouldn't normally do. But um, but it ended up actually sounding quite good, you know. And um, but working generally on on a, a drama um, because that was a, obviously a TV drama. Dra working on TV drama is especially exciting to to do because you're creating a mood um, that the audience really aren't um, shouldn't be really shouldn't be aware of the music if you're doing it properly. They're just you're just giving them an emotional feeling, and it's not like they're going, "Oh, that's a nice piece of music." You basically they're so engrossed in the show that the music is basically just raising their emotions a bit, you know, and you can create so many different moods with music. And when you take the music out, you, you realize how important it is. So if there's like a tension scene, you know, if there's no music, it's just sort of a bit bare and thing. But as soon as you go, dum, 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 add some tension to it. It's, it takes the whole thing to a different level. So that, that, in drama is really exciting and, and the other thing is you can lead the audience um you can give them thought you know the actors on there he's, he's thinking about something so you can almost tell the audience what he's thinking with the music you know and um so you're telling the story a bit more even though the acting isn't actually telling it for you and um or you can trick the audience so you could you can basically have a, a baddie we don't know he's the baddie so you, every time you see him you play nice goody music you know and um, but really he's the baddie so you can lead the audience up the wrong way and then surprise them at the end so there's so many different things you can do and so writing music for drama is really good fun and when you when you see it all played out you you, you notice that the music is there to guide the storytelling because even though the actors can do the best job in the world but the music is the thing that helps it because they could be like really sad but then when you have the music to mix with it it helps to to tell the story and you absolutely why yeah. music is so memorable and that's why people love listening to soundtracks on a separate basis not just yeah visuals. totally because it reminds them again of the film as well the soundtracks and um so, um, I mean, obviously, Chariots of Fire was originally a soundtrack to, to the film. And um, so, yeah, film soundtracks are absolutely, there's some absolutely stunning ones out there. Um, and so they are a, a massively important part of, of a film, you know. And one of the uh, programmes you've worked on has now been moved to Channel 5, uh, which took the neighbour's spot, because um, it's a interesting concept and it works really well for channel five because it's it's a it's, it's in the area of program that channel five produce what was it like working on cash in the attic <laughs> again uh that was a, that was that was a fun one to do and the the, the story but the, the fun story behind that is um um you know like i was saying before sometimes it takes a while to to come up with the idea for a thing and you involve and you work with the client and you play them something they go not quite right and then you move forward and you do a bit more and other times you can get the idea sort of straight away you know so with cash in the attic i had a phone call from the bbc and said oh we got this new show um and they explain what the program's about um people's antiques getting valued and all that and um 
and um, and they said what time of the day it was going to be on, and they told me sort of like the mood and the style of the show. And as the, as we were chatting on the phone, I was listening to them. Yeah, and in my head, this tune started to emerge, and the sound of it started to emerge as as we were chatting, and the, the, the sort of tinkly vibes, which was sort of slightly kitsch sounding. And, and the trumpet and, and, and the whole feel of it, the guitars, wow, 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 all that stuff. And um, so I put the phone down and I pretty much got the whole idea formed in my head and knew exactly what I was going to do. And the last thing they said was, can we come this was on Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday? So can we come around Friday and have a listen to how you're getting on to the studio? So yeah, no problem at all. So um, got to, um, I sort of, sort of put it to the back of my mind and, uh, I was so sort of like convinced about this tune that um, it got to Friday morning eventually and I suddenly thought, oh, they're coming around later. I thought, oh no, I haven't actually recorded it. I was, I was so, I had it so set up in my head that I hadn't actually um, sat down and, and transferred it and, and, and made a piece of music out of it, you know, and, and recorded it. So I thought, I, I better do it quickly. So. Um, I put it all together pretty much exactly as I was thinking of it and um, whizzed it together in, in an hour or so. And then literally as the, as the, uh, the last note was going on to the piece of music, the ding, the doorbell rang, boom, and they, and they, they were there at the door. I said, yeah, come in. And they said, oh, what you got? And so I said, oh, this, what do you think of this? And I hit the button and um, they said, oh, we absolutely love it. That's perfect, you know, so that was that was an amazingly sort of memorable thing about cashinetic really and um it was one of those quirky tunes that i love because it's just so quirky and it's a bit slightly cheesy in a way i quite like the fact that it's a bit cheesy and quirky and um it's also again great fun working with the musicians on it work with the trumpet player jim lynch who's did the one show did would you did the antiques road show so he's my always go-to trumpet player and he, he did some really great stuff. And um, so again, working with the musicians were really good. And um, it was great to have a show that, that had that long shelf life and became a familiar thing to people as well. And why do you reckon that us as a British or when I say us, I mean everyone, but us as a British audience like antique based program, why do you reckon that that's a successful genre? I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, I think people like the idea of having something um, that they had no idea that it's actually valuable. You know, so it's, in a way, it's a bit like winning the lottery. You know, it's that thing of this thing that you've got that's just sat on the shelf for years, suddenly could be worth thousands of pounds, you know. So I think people quite like the idea of that. Plus, plus, I suppose it's a bit of like the history behind things and the connections to people and all that. So I reckon that's probably what it is. Yeah, and and it's and it's one of those genres where no other genre can you have some a vase that's worth two million and then a painting that's actually a knockoff and it's worth four pound fifty. Absolutely, yeah, no that's other, it. And only in Britain, well, Sweden probably has a lot of antiques that are both two million and four pound fifty. And what was it? What was it like actually creating the the theme for it? Because it's one of those programs that that it's, it has to have a certain mood that other programmes haven't got because it's a jeopardy of whether or not whether or not this house is going to be what you expect. It was, uh, that was a very old show that I did in a way when I very first started doing the music and um, it was one of the, the first shows that I did that went out on network television across the UK as opposed to just being in the region and so from my point of view, I think the exciting thing about working on that show was the fact that it was a bigger show. And it was a, for me, it was a, a big step up the ladder in terms of my career progression, and um, and um, it was it was a good show to do from my point of view because it, it was again a sort of mood of a program that I was quite enjoyed doing, which is that sort of fun, um, joyful, happy get the, the audience in the mood type of show and um and i came up with quite a catchy theme for it because that was one of the things i quite enjoy was coming is coming up with themes that memorable themes that people remember you know it was da, 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 was, a, was the theme for that one and um i got a, a sax player to play that play that on the saxophone so um 
that from from that point of view that that was the, the fun part of doing that one and and when you're um when when, when you're out and about and and like when you when you walking about in a certain situation do people recognize uh, do recognize you um because you because you now really you now do videos online explaining how you created your music do people recognize mm. you as the creator of x x y and z not particularly um i mean a couple of people have um that i i people that i see regularly sort of like in cafes and stuff um and that, that know me anyway from just being a customer have sort of said oh i saw you on my TikTok, and i had no idea that that you did that you know and so that that's quite a fun fun moment when people do that and um but generally obviously people because of, you're fairly anonymous as a tv composer no nobody has a clue who i am you know or what i do and it's it's always quite a fun thing when people say um you know especially like cab drivers you know you you, you get in the cab and go wow well, what do you do though mate what do you do there mate and you go oh yeah i do this and they go what really and then you I'll play them a little tune and they go no way and then you play them another one no way i'm going to tell my wife about this you know so it's quite good fun to um to to do that reveal thing when people have no idea who you are um but generally i haven't I haven't really been recognized yet but um i mean it's fun, the fun the fun things that have, have happened as well is um coincidentally um because i've done albums as well um some people moved into our, our our lane in our little village and uh the chap said to me do you know he found in he sort of found out what i did he said you know something i bought your first album i've got your first album you know and i said wow i've never met anybody that's actually bought my album you're the first person to say that i bought it and you're, you've moved into the road as well you know and so uh, eventually they moved out and then last year this new couple moved into their house and then lo and behold the new chap said do you know something i bought your second album <laughs> and they, they they hadn't they didn't know each other at all you know but so so coincidentally two neighbors have both bought my two of my albums separately you know which um one of those strange quirks but uh, generally no, I mean, us TV composers, we're pretty anonymous people, you know, people don't know us. So in a way, it's like being a radio presenter, I guess. And when you, when you create, when you first started creating um, music other than TV theme, was it like more of a, more of a challenge when it came to then writing the TV themes? Because you had this knowledge of writing like vast music that was for, that was for general consumption, not just for filling in the style of a program that was going to be broadcast mm. well i think um you know i i started off really with theme tunes so it was harder actually writing longer tracks because I'm, i was so used to writing things that only lasted for 30 seconds you know so coming up with longer songs i found m more of a challenge really than writing the shorter things so it was in a way it's the opposite way around to, to most people um and um f i focused on doing tv things from the from early on and uh, my sort of background was working in broadcasting and radio and television you know so i felt like i was a person that worked in tv and radio that happened to write music you know so um it, I, I evolved from that and but um part of the the um especially with my touch and go album and the single that that came out that was um in the charts um, part of the reason why it worked is because a lot of it was very good tv music because most of it was instrumental with lots of really good um hooks memorable little hooks you know da -da 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 -ba -ba -da, and all that um which i love doing i love catchy tunes that um i mean catchy is a bit of an old-fashioned word but tunes that are sort of you instantly hear and you instantly they're called earworms actually is is the sort of technical term for them it's a, it's, a, it's a tune that you hear a couple of times and it sits in your head and it doesn't go away and you can't get rid of it and it drives you bonkers because you go ah, ah, that tune and so i'm i've um, always enjoyed uh coming up with those and um you know I've, I've come up with a few that have been quite memorable like that and so um from the album point of view it was the other way around it was it was coming up with longer tracks um but obviously 
writing the, the catch the memorable tunes was it was an asset for the second album and when you're writing um a theme tune what is the perfect length for a theme tune mm, now that's an interesting question because um it's actually changed because uh, when I first started doing them, they used to be about 30 seconds long. And some of them used to be like even 40 seconds long. Um, and they'd, have, they'd be accompanied by graphics, you know. But as, the, as things have changed and there's much more TV to watch and what they want people to do is, is they want to hold people's attention as long as they can. And people's attention to grabbed so much by so many other things these days that if the attention isn't held to, you know, for long enough, they're going to flick over to another side. They're going to pick up their phone. They're going to do this. So theme tunes have actually shortened now to pretty much um, like 15 seconds. Um, and quite a lot of shows don't have theme tunes at all anymore in, in the old fashioned way. A lot of them just have a tiny little bit of music goes, bam, 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 you know, as a little key into something. Um, but some of the, the, the iconic shows that, that, that have been on for a while have retained their theme tunes. Um, but a lot of new shows, I reckon 15 seconds is probably around about the length that theme tunes are nowadays. So you have to come up with an idea that starts, that's got an idea that, that has a middle bit that ends and resolves. You've got to fit all that into 15 seconds, you know. And do you reckon that the, um, the, the revolution of the uh, greatest theme tunes. Do you reckon that evolution will come back eventually? Because in in society, everything turns up again, like vinyls disappear and rock back up, and cassettes around in there. Soon we'll see the VHS will return. But do you reckon that? Do you reckon that the art of theme tunes, as they were, will come back into full force? Well, I hope so, and I think um, there's still, especially with a lot of really good high end drama stuff on, say, like Netflix or. Amazon, whatever, a lot of those have gone back to having really nice long theme tunes. And, um, but they give you the option of skip intro, which is a bit annoying because so you can actually, if you don't want to listen to the theme tune, you can, you can skip it. Um, but um, so theme tunes are still alive and well, but much more for high end dramas and uh, streamed dramas. Uh, rather than sort of day-to-day -day TV, live TV in a way. So um, they're still going strong, you know, and in, in a funny sort of way, they, they've got um, much more sophisticated, you know, some amazingly good theme tunes out there. Um, if you watch Netflix, Amazon and stuff, some brilliant theme tunes. And and some of, and you are right, some of the high-end, so like, for instance, the German series on Netflix, Dark, has a fantastic mm. theme tune and and it sets up the program perfectly because absolutely you get to so you just need a minute to realize what on earth is happening in the, in the actual program and you're watching the theme tune and it is one of those where it's like oh and then and then you realize you turn the light off and then you're more spooked out because the theme tune's helped and you rec do you reckon that the people are, are still fond of of old theme tunes because of it it brings back memories do you reckon that that's why theme tunes from like let's say banana splits and all them type era shows uh still in people's public consciousness because they remember in the memories well i think they are i think i think the great thing about music is that um it you can you know you, like you said the banana splits you could people couldn't remember the opening visual sequence of the banana splits vaguely you could say oh i think i remember them jumping around or something happened and wasn't there a bus in it or something so you don't remember visual things, but music sticks in your head. And and then you just remember it um, vividly and, and you can hear the piece of music in your head. And as soon as you start thinking about it, that will take you back to oh, Saturday mornings. I was on the couch uh, with my brother watching the telly. So the music just evokes a whole uh, other set of memories and takes you back to that moment and that's the absolute amazing joy of of theme tunes and music in general um that it takes you back to moments and um you know and what's what's amazing as a composer like i i, I can listen to things that i did 20 years ago and they still sound like i did them yesterday to me you know and i can open up like um 
the, the tracks again on my computer and I go, oh yeah, there's that bit. And I can do a little cheap tweak and a change of it, you know, and I'm thinking, well, I, I haven't touched this for 20 years, but it's like, I only did it yesterday. And it's so familiar to me from that point of view. So it sounds like all the music that I've done just sounds like it's still there, you know, it's not like a memory for me, it's still current. Yeah, because um, the theme tunes of, of Yes Year are slightly becoming more popular again because there's that really fantastic band, band the Pound Shop Boys, that do like a Pet Shop Boys style remixes to, to to theme tunes that you wouldn't even expect to do, like um, 80 Days Around the World, Willie, Willie Frog, I'm setting the same record wrong of the, of the Slushy Show, and it's one of those things that theme tunes are like the backbones of to when you when you think of TV, the first thing you think of is the theme tune, and then absolutely the theme tune. So if you've not yeah. seen, let's say, J- Jamie and his mind of torch for years, but you remember the theme tune, you then mm-hmm. remember the images, and then it's just like, oh, I remember that, and then you dis- yeah. rediscover it again. And I think that's what helps keep them them formats alive and keeps keeps it, it alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which yeah. which is great. Yeah, which is why why we all love them. Yeah, and and. And I and I just think you can spend hours listening to, to theme tunes. I on, on my computer so far as of right now, I've got a nine hour compilation of theme tunes as wow. every second. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, and, and you can only go up to twenty four hours in the editing software, so it'll it'll have to eventually eventually stop. But at really? the moment, have you got any projects that you're working on that you're allowed to talk about? you're excited for people to uh, listen to or watch, like as in like watch with the program. If you get to the yeah, well, it's, um, um, I'm just literally just finishing a, sh- a, a different, slightly different, it's a radio show for BBC Radio 4 called Curious Cases and uh, it goes out on a Saturday, Saturday morning, I think. And it's like, it's a show, it's why is the grass group viewers can write in and it's a family show. And uh, viewers can, or listeners rather, can write in and say, why Why is the grass green? And why does, um, you know, that happen to that when you do that? And um, so it's a sort of like, and they, they, they're like a couple of detectives going, let's look into this. Let's find out why that happens. And it's a really popular show on a, on Radio 4, you know, and um, they, they just wanted to update their theme tune and have a new theme tune. And um, so that's been really good fun to do and it's got that sort of a bit of the old-fashioned detective feel to it um a slightly pastiche feel for old detective themes and um and so uh we've been working on that for the last couple of months and coming up with ideas and changing it and things and getting some nice weird sounds going on in there and so that i think that's going to start probably in september sometime so it's one to listen out for it's called curious cases on radio 4. And do you reckon that doing themes for radio is a lot harder than doing them for TV? Because on radio, you've only, you haven't got the visual to look at to discover what you're after, but you've only got the audio to listen to. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think the theme tunes, they're, they are, I'd say they're, um, they're not harder. It's just a sort of slightly different format, really. Um, in a way, they're, they're a bit more liberating because you're not having to focus too much on getting everything to fit the pictures and fit an exact length and so the music is standing alone on its own you know so in a, in a way you can be it's a bit more liberating in a way you can be freer with it and um um it's nice that it's just on its own as, as a piece of music as opposed to to being in the background you know on tv so um from that point of view yeah they, they're good fun to do and now we come to the point in the interview where you can tell people where they can find you, but don't give away your address online. Where can people find you? They can find me at uh, www.davidlowmusic.com. That's my website. Or on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on TikTok. It's David Low Music. And tune in, follow me, and you can see how I've created some of the, the theme tunes that you'll know out there and how, how they, the layers are built on them. And so there we have it. Another fantastic, wonderful, extraordinary interview. Yes, I've still not finished eating the dictionary. I'm currently on the letter T. It's very chewy. Trying to trying to swing it down with water just makes it too just too liquid. And you, you you need to eat it solidly so the words seep in. And yes, I'm also 
it in a Swedish dictionary just just to offset it, just so I get different flavors and different tastes. Because they talk about flavoring, uh, as they say on Sunday morning, they talk about the flavoring, and so they say it on Saturday the kitchen before he pauses and then forgets what he's talking about, spend ten seconds in silence. But that's just Saturday kitchen. It, it needs adverts. Basically, it needs to move to ITV. Uh, and so there we have it. Another wonderful interview. Uh, thank you for letting me interview you. You're welcome. And thank you guys for watching. There should be more interviews from me. There should. It's it's only or well, it's nearly the end of August. So the word should should be definitely. But who knows where life will take you? You take one one step at a time, um, which is a reference to a theme tune. If you if you listen carefully and if you think I've said the words correctly, because it's only just popped in my head that that was connected to a program that no one really watched because it's American and no one really watches American programs that get cancelled and then never find the light of day in the UK again. But there we have it. Thank you guys for watching and remember, no, I forgot.